Okay, in this video we'll be discussing um, standard addition calibration, which by definition is when we determine the concentration of our unknown by adding a known standard concentration of our analyte to our sample. So that's our definition here that we'll be working with, okay? And the relationship that we're looking at here is that the concentration of our analyte initially should give us some response from our instrument. So this IX is equal to instrument response from our analyte. Then when I combine my standard and my analyte concentration, I should get an increased signal, essentially an instrument signal of my analyte concentration plus my standard. So my instrument signal should increase proportionately. Okay, so we have a couple other variables in here to define. Uh, the brackets are always going to denote concentration when we talk from here on out. And X sub I is the concentration of our analyte initially. Okay? Then we have S sub F, which is the concentration of our standard final. And X sub F, which is the concentration of our analyte final. And you might be asking yourself, well, why do we have these initial concentrations and final concentrations? Well, our initial concentration is what we are trying to find. So we won't know this right off the bat. We're trying to solve for this. <clears throat> However, if we start with a certain sample and we add a known standard concentration, that means that we are adding some amount of volume to our sample. So ultimately, we have to consider that by adding volume, we're changing the total volume of our sample, we have to consider dilution. And that's why we have concentration final and concentration final for our, both our analyte and our standard. We have to consider dilution. Now, based on the dilution equation M1V1 equals M2V2, right, we can put our final concentration of our analyte and our final concentration of our standard in terms of the initial concentration of our analyte and the initial concentration of our standard. And the way that we can do this is by saying that X final is equal to the concentration of X initial times volume initial over volume final. Right? This is just a rearranged equation of X1, V1, or excuse me, M1, V1, M2, V2. We can say the same thing for S final that it's equal to the concentration of my standard initially multiplied by the volume of that initial standard in the total or final volume of my solution. Okay? <clears throat> okay, so we're going to be using these moving forward. So this equation, this equation, and this top equation we'll be using moving forward. Okay? So, let's, um, let's say we're trying to analyze for sodium. So I'm going to rip this guy out maybe successfully. No. Okay, I'm going to fold that back and continue going. You guys still see everything okay? Okay. So let's say that we um, have an unknown that we're analyzing for sodium. And this gives an instrument response of my unknown is equal to 4.27 millivolts. So this is an electrochemical measurement, okay? So that immediately tells me something. It tells me that my instrument response of X is going to be 4.27 millivolts. Okay? Now, let's say I add 
five mils. of, let's see, 2.8 molar, 2.08 molar NaCl to 95 mils of my unknown. So you can already see I'm going to be adding some more sodium, right, Na plus, to the unknown that I'm analyzing for sodium. So, <coughs> What does this tell us here? First, let's look at what the instrument response gives us. So, the instrument response for this new sample which involves my unknown plus my standard is going to be 7.98 millivolts. Okay, so this tells me I of my S plus X equals 7.98 millivolt. And of course, because we've added some sodium to the system, we would expect our instrument response to increase from 4 millivolts to 8 millivolts. So that at least is a good um, double check for you guys, okay? So now let's get into the nitty gritty of we're trying to solve for the sodium in my initial sample, okay? So let's remember that we said that sodium initial is equal to the instrument response initial all over instrument response of my initial plus standard all over my standard in this case final plus sodium final. Okay, so let's start filling in some things here. First of all, it's very easy to fill in our instrument responses. Those are given for us right here. <coughs> so we have sodium Oops, I drew my back brackets backwards. In, uh, initial is equal to 4.27 millivolts over my standard final plus sodium final, which is gives me an instrument response of 7.98 millivolts. Okay, so now um, I essentially can solve for my standard final using the dilution equation, right? I know the molarity that I started with. I know the volume that I took of that concentrated solution, and I know my final volume. <clears throat> so, I'm still holding on to my unknown of sodium initial, and putting that now over 4.27 millivolts, over 7.98, so that's going to stay constant for the rest of my calculation. But, I know that I took volume 1 of molarity 1, and diluted it to a total volume. So you have to consider total volume here. I took five mils and added it to 95. So my total volume here should be 100 mils, okay? So if I do that, <coughs> I should get, uh, let's see, five mils times 2.08 molar all over 100 mils plus and a final, okay? And when I do that, I think that that, uh, that comes out to 0 0.104 molar of sodium plus now my Na final, All right? And if I simplify this fraction over here for my instrument response, let me see what I get. Uh, my computer has gone to sleep. Okay, so if I divide what? 4.27 divided by 7.98, I get 0 0.535. And I'm going to carry one sig fig past, 0 0.5351. Okay, and that's unitless because my millivolts cancel. Now, when I look at this, I have two unknowns here, right? I have 
<clears throat> sodium initial concentration and sodium final concentration. And I know I want to solve for the initial concentration of my sodium. So, what I can do from here is remind myself that sodium final is equal to sodium initial multiplied by my volume initial over my volume final, right? So let's remind ourselves what the volume initial for my sodium would be. My sample was 95 mils. My final volume is 100 mils because I added five mils of standard, okay? So now I can say that my sodium final is equal to my sodium initial <coughs> times 95 over 100. Okay, and you'll notice here, the volume of your sample in a standard edition, you don't want it to change very much. The whole point of a standard edition is to take into account the matrix effect. And if you really dilute your sample by a large volume, you're changing the matrix, right? You're making it basically aqueous if you're working in an aqueous solution. Um, so consider that. You see there's just a small volume change for our, um, our sample here, okay? So now I can plug this in up here, and I get sodium initial over 0 0.104 molar plus sodium initial times 0 0.95 equals... 0.5351, or initial, one, sorry. Okay, so now I can solve for this guy here. I have my sodium initial over 0 0.104 molar plus 0 0.95 sodium initial equals 0 0.535. I'm going to multiply both sides by my denominator here, which isolates one of my variables. Well, it's the same variable, but it helps me to isolate my variable. So I can get 0 0.5351 multiplied by 0 0.104 molar plus 0 0.95 and my unknown sodium initial. I can distribute that 0. 535 across so that I get sodium initial is now equal to 0 0.5351 0.104 0.055 plus 0 0.5083 sodium. Okay, so trying to solve for sodium, I have like unknowns on both sides of my algebraic equation here. Uh, I know that this is one concentration of sodium and this is 0.5 concentrations of sodium. So I can subtract 0.5083 sodium from each side. What that gives me now is, that's one minus 0.5083. Zero point four nine one seven of sodium is equal to point zero five five six five, and my concentration of sodium when I divide through should be zero point one one three. Two molar, and based on my third sig fig, I can say that the concentration of sodium in my initial um, unknown, 0 0.113 molar. So, the main consideration when you're working these problems is to consider that you have a dilution factor to take into account. 
So practice these in your homework and let me know if you have any questions.